A commitment to the mission and each other is core to a co-elevating team. A couple of years ago, I had to create a new word to do the work that we do. We coach executive teams to meet the transformational pressures of the marketplace and fundamentally break through and go higher. High performing, high impact teams like you've never seen before, committed to each other's success, committed to the mission, willing to share transparently in rooms with each other, willing to, to develop and coach and critique and challenge and collaborate and support and celebrate each other. Those kind of teams barely exist in the workplace today. We've got a lot of teams that exist in a, in a place of coexistence where everybody diligently is doing their best. Recently, I was with the executive team of one of the great airlines in this world, and they're doing very, very well. But just asking the question of this team, how committed are you to each other's success? How committed are you to take this organization 10x? What could you do as an organization that could be potentially 10x if you worked differently together? All of these were dialogues and discussions over a lovely dinner that got this team to awaken and recognize that a new operating model of how this team performed was needed, not in a coexisting fashion, which slips into collaboration as needed and then slips back into coexistence. Instead, in a model of what I call co-elevation, a team truly committed together to the same mission, a team committed to elevating to that mission, and a team committed to elevating each other. A commitment to the mission and each other is core to a co-elevating team. A number of years ago, I wrote a book called Never Eat Alone. And that book was all about reaching out with empathy and generosity and, and, and vulnerability and authenticity and uh, progressive uh, focus on other people's success. And I called that building relationships. I didn't want to call it networking because frankly, the word networking had a patina on it that I didn't feel was right. Now, many people feel that that book helped redefine the word networking to make it much more generous and authentic. But I always tried to stay away from the word and I just talked about building authentic relationships, generous, supportive relationships. That's a lot of words. Then I wrote a book called Who's Got Your Back? And the principle was that in organizations, if you can find a few people who you can go deep with, not just the broad networking relationships, but deep, committed, I've got your back, I will not let you fail relationships. I knew how important that was to real transformation of an individual. I knew that that was the core of my elevation and growth in my personal and professional life. And I still called them just relationships, but I called them I've got your back relationships. Once again, a lot of words. As we started working with executive teams and as we started working in large scale organizational change, it became increasingly important to create a verbiage, a language around the type of relationship we're talking about. You know, they say that in, that in Alaska, Eskimos have multiple words for snow because it's so important. It's not just snow, it's wet snow, it's dry snow, it's this snow, it's that snow. And when you're dealing in a word where increasingly authority and control isn't what guides your success, but the ability to influence and work across networks to create great innovations. And leadership is leadership without authority and leadership across networks. You're building those kind of relationships. What is that kind of relationship? And it could take me a few sentences to describe it, or I could call it a co-elevating relationship. One step beyond collaboration, one step toward a commitment to mutual growth, commitment to the mission and each other, a commitment to going higher together, to co-elevating. Pretty powerful word, pretty proud that we stumbled upon its need and I'm pretty proud that we've been able to drive its execution at so many companies uh, today and in so many lives. Friends of mine are now using the word co-elevation to define their, their wedding vows. We're committing to co-elevate, to going higher together in our lives, a commitment to each other, our goals, our dreams, our hopes, a commitment to hold each other accountable, to be there for each other in ways 
that aren't just coexisting, but truly going higher together. You know, it's been the basis of the turnaround of some pretty significant companies and the savior of many, many hundreds of thousands of jobs, which again, I'm, I'm deeply proud of. Co-elevation. If I think of all the things that I've, I've done and our organization has worked on, I'm deeply proud of the work we've done. But I do believe that one of the greatest lasting legacies uh, will be the introduction of, of a word, but not just the introduction of a word, but the introduction of a new way of being. A good friend of mine and I have decided to co-found and partner we have, we bought 15 acres in Topanga Canyon outside of Los Angeles. And we're gonna create Camp Co-Elevation, a center for leadership where you can, as you enter the property, you will feel a different way of being. You'll feel what it's like to be committed to the people around you, to pause and to look each other uh, with empathy, without judgment with an invitation uh, and curiosity to understand points of view, to co-create great ideas uh, with those who are members of, of this particular facility. We're just scr scratching the surface on it. Last night was actually the, uh, the kickoff of an executive team that we formed to, to pull the constituencies of business leaders and entrepreneurs and inventors and scientists and artists and musicians all of whom can co-create an extraordinary new world that would feel and would grow and expand a co-elevating set of behaviors. God, that feels right to me at a time when out there in this world, there's so much evidence that we need it. I don't wanna get negative of where it doesn't exist or where, it, where a bifurcated or schismatic set of dialogues are occurring around us today. I'm just focusing with the teams that I'm working with on resonating co-elevation, making it a beacon of light that people will be attracted to that not only speaks for itself relative to results and outcomes, but from a sense of purpose and joy in each of our lives and how we show up. Heck, it's just the way I wanna live my life, co-elevating with the people around me.